Marty Breeden, welcome to the Prophecy Club. Sam, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure being on with you and your audience, and uh, I look forward to what we're going to share today in the Lord. Well, what happened was I was actually serving um, in Newmarket at the time uh, as a police officer, and I had been there for eight years. I've been having some health issues. I had really taken my hand off the plow stand as far as my walk with the Lord. I had allowed things to slip into my life. I began to have a lot of stress um, being a patrolman, the situations that we had to deal with at the time, and uh, began to drink, self-medicate, and uh, had several health issues going on at the time that later we were to find out from the physicians and the surgeons uh, that there was the perfect storm that came together and that I had sleep apnea with the alcohol and then also had asthma. What I did not realize at the time was there was a CO2 buildup in my system and I couldn't get the CO2 out and the oxygen in and I kept having issue after issue. Um, so I woke up on the morning of July 17th, 2015. Uh, my wife looked at me and she said, you don't look good. She said, you need to go to the hospital. We're taking you to the hospital. She said, when I said, okay, she knew something was wrong. Uh, because I didn't do that. I didn't, I tried to stay away from the doctors in the hospital and everything like that. I was, um, 51 years old at the time. I'm 54 now. They, uh, took me into the, into the ER and they started running a battery of tests. Come back and they told my wife, they said, we don't know if he's had a heart attack, but the EKG and all the blood work are just off the scale. We're not, we're not for sure what happened. Uh, so, or what's going on. So they told my wife, uh, a little bit after that, they said, we can't keep him stabilized here in the ER. We're going to have to take him to the CCU. So they told her to wait in another room. She heard all throughout the hospital, code blue, code blue. And she looked at my mom and said, well, I hope that's not Marty. Well, that was Marty. And I went actually code blue twice uh, within a 48-hour period, was placed on life support, breathing with a respirator, had to have uh, emergency tracheostomy surgery, uh, was two weeks in a coma. Uh, and over five weeks in the hospital and four months of uh, in-home care. But what was what was odd is keep in mind that what I said initially that at the time I was not in a good place with the Lord. But God is God is so merciful because Sam, when I went code blue, I immediately went through a tunnel at a speed that is beyond comprehension. I'm a retired cop. I know what it's like to go really fast. There's no description. I can tell you how fast this was. But I began to go through a tunnel, and I, I came out of the tunnel, and I was immediately in the presence of the Lord. And I stood in the presence of the Lord, and I, I heard his voice, and he said, my church does not really believe that I'm coming back soon. I was stunned by this. And he repeated it again. He said, my church does not really believe that I'm coming back soon. And then again, he said, my church does not really believe that I'm coming back soon. And at that point, over me, had, every time he would say it, it would be with more volume and with more passion. And finally, I, I raised my hand like almost like a little school child trying to get the, the teacher's attention. And I lifted my hand. I said, Lord, I said, I said, yes, we do believe you're coming back soon. We preach about it. We sing about it. We study about it. We pray about it. Well, we believe you're coming back soon. And then, Stan, the voice of the Lord, the, the timber of his voice changed. The tone changed. That was not a good and idea, said, huh? <laughs> no. No, that was not a good Son, idea Son, you should have kept your mouth shut. <laughs> and he, he, said, he said, my church does not really believe I'm coming back soon, for if they did, they would not be living as they are. And then lovingly, he pointed his finger at me, but very firmly, and he said, I am coming back soon, and my church is not ready. Now go back and tell the things that you have heard and know that your message will not be received. And at that moment, um, I came back into my body. The Lord sustained my life, and I spent, uh, as I said, three weeks in the intensive care, uh, was eventually moved to the University of Virginia Transitional Care Facility in Charlottesville to learn how to walk, talk, and swallow again. Um my first night at UVA, uh, at the transitional care facility, uh, I had another encounter with the Lord and I had, it started off as a vision of just a small oval shaped bright light and it began to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I finally realized that I was standing in a large football stadium, uh, at night all alone. There was no one else in there, no one else present. And I looked up at the, at the scoreboard 
and I saw two thirteen. And then I immediately heard the Lord's voice say, my church should be living as though this is the two-minute warning. Now, I'm a huge football fan, and God knew that I would know exactly what he meant by that, that in the last two minutes, the football team makes a mad dash doing everything they can to win the game. Both teams understand that the end of the game is in hand, and the referee is about to blow the whistle, and the game will be over. Well, I was still in a wheelchair at the time, and I actually had a speak, uh, speaking apparatus on because of the tracheostomy surgery that I had. But just a few hours, about four hours after that vision, I was in a wheelchair sitting in my room, and I was looking out the window. And I was beginning just to ponder that vision that I had only hours earlier, two-minute warning. The church should be living in it as though this is a two-minute warning. We're very close. And so shortly then, there was a knock at my door. And as good as I could, I said, I said, come in. And the two ladies were obviously part of the UVA medical staff. They were wearing their, their white robes, and they, they said, uh, can we come in and speak with you? And they introduced themselves, and one said uh, that she would be my physical therapist while I was there to try to get me back on my feet, and the other one was an occupational therapist. And they started telling me about the treatment plans and how they were going to try to get me back on my feet. And then at, at one point, Stan, the conversation took a really odd turn because the physical therapist looked at me and she said, Mr. Breeden, can I ask you a personal question? And I said, well, of course you can. And she said, would you consider yourself a man of faith? I told him, I said, I've I've certainly not always lived it. I said, "I've, I've failed much. I said, but this has been a very humbling experience. And I said, yes, I'm a follower of Jesus. I, I am a Christian. When I said that, she and the other lady looked at each other and smiled and I thought this was odd. I said, ladies, I'm not at all offended uh, by your question, but it's kind of an odd question for medical staff to ask a patient, isn't it? What she said next, Dan, is almost beyond belief. They said, Mr. Breeden, we had no intentions of coming in and seeing you this morning. We were both on our way to see other patients. But when we were, we were walking down the hall, each of us going in opposite directions, When we got in front of your door, the number two appeared in the spirit. We both saw it on your door. So we asked the Lord, Lord, what does this number two mean? And she said, the Lord said, go in and ask that man if he knows what the number two means. And he'll know exactly what you're talking about. She said, what does that mean? I told her, I said, the Lord's coming back soon. He's given the two minute warning. I mean, there was no way possible uh, that that could have happened just by happen chance. What you're saying then is that the two nurses seeing the two come in immediately after the vision confirms the vision. Okay, so we know that we're at the two-minute warning. Now I'm going to ask you an uncomfortable question because nobody wants to say when Jesus is going to come or something in the future is going to happen. But do you have from everything you've got, from your best guess or however, wherever you want to draw from, how much time do you think we have to the fall of America? I, th- I think we're on the, I think we're at, at the door. I don't know if you're familiar with it. So I'll ask, are you familiar with the concept of a 400 year judgment cycle and a 40 year judgment cycle? No. Okay. I have been mulling it over in my spirit because 1620 was when the Mayflower Compact was signed when our forefathers said they're starting a new nation for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 400 years later arrives at 2020. 2020 is also 40 years from when Demetri Dudeman had the angel come to him and say that judgment has been pronounced upon America. So 400 years from our start is 2020. 40 years from the time that judgment is pronounced on our nation is 2020. Terry Bennett that said that the Lord told him that America's fall is in 2021. Now, my best guess, and, and I'm, I'm just asking you just just give your best guess, does that sound like it's a reasonable possibility? Because that's perhaps less than two years. Depends on how you look at it. Two, three years in that ballpark. What do you think? Absolutely. I absolutely believe that's a, that is a possibility. If, okay, so if we're it, here beyond 2020. Okay, uh, so 2021, it, I will be one of the most surprised men uh, on the earth. Okay, so go to your next dream. I understand you had another really powerful one. And last month, on three separate occasions, I literally felt as though my spirit was leaving my body, and I can only liken it to when I went code blue. 
uh, back in July of 2015, that same sense of leaving time and entering into eternity. The difference is that when I coded, I went, immediately went into to a tunnel and was in the presence of the Lord. But what I was experiencing this time was different, different in that uh, I feel myself slipping out of my body and I'm looking and seeing something in the not too distant future. And what I saw uh, was very, very concerning. Um, I feel that there is a certain event that will, uh, a significant event that will take place that will be followed by other significant events uh, in rapid fashion. And they will happen uh, very quickly because I saw inner cities were blazing with fires and uh, teams of gangs of, of all races, creeds, and ethnicities were, were banding together. I would be ushered hours ahead to see the results of what they're rioting and their looting and their violence. And I would see the land that they had trampled and left behind. Uh, it was gray and flat and desolate. I saw burning cars, burning buildings, and ashes. Everywhere I looked, Stan, I saw men and women wearing bandanas and masks, and they were carrying firearms and clubs and machetes. And there was there was a viciousness to these gangs and, and a bloodthirst to them that was not human. I knew that we were dealing with something demonic. Uh, I've seen inner city families trying to hide and secure their lives and their loved ones. Some of the chosen uh, will be given warnings when to leave uh, by the Lord, and they some of them will heed, and they will get out just in the nick of time. Uh, then another time I saw that some of the gangs would venture outside of the city, and as soon as they would enter a more rural area, they would be much, met with much resistance uh, as the country people had heard of what was going on, and they banded together, and they were very, very effective in preserving their lives and their goods, and the gangs would be quickly turned back to go into the city. Uh, people would be afraid to go into the city because of certain death or great harm, yet the gangs would not come back out into the rural area uh, for the same reason. Now, what struck me odd from what I saw, especially being uh, retired law enforcement, you would think that there would be law enforcement everywhere. Well, at this point, what the Lord showed me, I did not see law enforcement or military. Uh, anywhere. It was absolute chaos, but there's good news as well. Um, during this absolute chaos, there started to be a mighty move of God, and many were moved by fear seeing the things that some of them had heard as a child. They were seeing everything that was taking place around them. They literally came broken to the Lord, and the Lord very graciously welcomed them in. Um, many of the ministers of God during this time were very wise, and they walked in great power and authority. Uh, church services and moves of God were spontaneous and supernatural. Uh, they were often in homes, and I've seen people preaching uh, by the roadside and in parking lots and in malls, and just miracles would take place. It was phenomenal to see every the move of God in the midst of chaos, and I have seen. Time and time again, Stan, that there are things, I believe, that are coming very, very soon. And when they happen, the greatest fruit, I think, that many of us are going to see in ministry and outreach and evangelism and healing and supernatural works of God is going to happen right in the midst of chaos. Yep. Okay. Now, I, I don't think you know this, but you folks out there have been listening for a while. No, I've been saying this. August the 8th, 2015, I was preparing to get ready for the sermon the next morning. And I said, Lord, I don't have anything to say. What would you like to say to your people tomorrow morning? And I heard words. Now, I've heard them in the night. But this first time I've heard them awake when I'm sitting here in the same chair and looking at the same monitor I'm looking at right now. And I heard this is the time of miracles. And then it was downloaded to my heart that as the judgment hits, so will the miracles. Then Pastor Messi says that God told him, no, 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 these are not going to be double portion miracles. These are going to be sevenfold miracles. Prophet Sundar Salvarez said that he had four angels visit him, and they told him that we are about to pass into the age of power to come, and that we will see miracles that no one, not even them, all the way back to Adam, no one has ever seen, meaning miracles that are beyond what is described in Joel chapter 2, where your old men will dream dreams, your young, young men will see visions, 
and great power is going to be poured out upon people. Now, tell us the next dream or vision. Most of the time when I see um, destruction or devastation in my dreams, and, you know, I, I want to hit on something real quick. You know, after I came out of the hospital and had recovered and these dreams began to come, I knew that the Lord was giving me warnings that would often, he would show me storms. Often there would be tornadoes. Often I, I would even see uh, other nations attacking our nations with incoming um, ICBMs. Some of these dreams were, were very frightening. And often when I see, you know, destruction and devastation, uh, I see it literally uh, among the cities. Uh, I had a dream on August 11th, 2018. And the dream came as I looked out over the landscape and saw destruction everywhere. The land laid waste. It was post-apocalyptic and looked nearly flattened, and it was dark and grayish. It was then that I noticed, I noticed I had a very large angel walking on my right side, and I've never had a dream where an angel was walking beside me. I've never had a dream uh, with an angel at all, but th there was a very large angel walking to my right side, and I was literally afraid to look straight at him, but I said, why are you here with me? He said, I've always been here with you, but this time in your life and on this journey, you're going to need me to explain some things to you. So we began to walk, and I knew I was in the spirit. I began to see places that I knew, and they were absolutely devastated. Towns and buildings that had been that I had been as, and seen as a small boy. Uh, it was terrible. The devastation was just absolutely everywhere. And I remember thinking and weeping out loud. I said, I just want to get home to my people and those that I love to see if I can help because they must be frightened. They must be hurting. I know they must be suffering. So the angel and I took off walking on a very familiar road to me. And finally, we reached an area not too far uh, from where I grew up. And I was taken back then by how everything looked so destroyed. Then suddenly, I saw that I could absolutely go no further. There was a massive and huge fence preventing me from entering the town. Uh, the gauge had a huge black lock on it. I could go no further, and I was sad because I had traveled so far. And I began to weep bitterly as I saw this fence surrounding the area. Uh, I needed to enter where my family was and my friends uh, that needed help. And I saw this huge lock on this iron fence, and I just stared at it. And it was then that the angel spoke again. And he said, you have the key to unlock this gate, and you were given it a long time ago. And now is your time to use it. I was immediately transported back in time to when I was a 17-year-old boy. I saw myself weeping at the altar of an old country church that I was raised in, crying and giving my heart to Jesus and weeping before the Lord. I saw myself being filled with the Holy Spirit and experiencing the power of God in a measurable fashion. I recall this experience so profoundly affected me because I knew as the disciples of old that I had been endued with power from on high. Then suddenly... I was transported back to the gate. I looked down and saw a large brass key in my hand that I hadn't noticed before that I had. The angel said, that key, Marty, is the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. You were given this long ago. Use it now. I put the key in the lock, and I literally heard bars breaking and steel and iron shattering. I walked to the gate and toward my people and the town, and I awoke. This nation is going to see devastation unlike we've ever seen before. Uh, we've used the word chaos many times today, but there's going to be things that are going to happen. And Jesus forewarned us that it would, that men's hearts would literally fail them for fear for looking into things that are coming upon the earth. And I think we're going to be seeing some of those things. So as these things happen, thank God that the Lord is warning us. And we have to remember as believers, even as this dream showed me, the only thing that we have that will help us survive these times is the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. People don't want to hear that. It's, it's not one of those things that's going to generate great offerings. If you remember back to my Code Blue experience, I said the, I heard the Lord say, go back and tell what you've seen, but know that your message will not be received. Well, the first year, I felt it incumbent upon me to share with pastors, men of God who were shepherding flocks. And I probably told over 50 pastors, Stan, and it was rejected out of hand. They, they all looked at me like I had a third eye or something. No one wanted to hear it. And finally, thank God, a, a disabled pastor who pastored a small country ch church back in the holler 
I uh, had 10, 12 people invited me to come and share, and it was the first time I was ever able to share. And since then, uh, God has been merciful, and we've been able to get the word out somewhat. 